Good morning. A few more hugs, a few more hellos. Good you're here. Glad you're here. <laughs> All right. So, good morning, everyone, and welcome to First United Methodist Church of Elgin. Um, we have had some announcements rolling. I know we have a finance meeting today at 1215 in the fellowship hall. No? Gotcha. Okay. I'm... I'm on here. Sorry about that. All right. So in the office, don't go to the fellowship hall. They won't be happy if you do. All right. They're going to start. We're going to start confirmation classes in the fall. Uh, they'll be once a month on a Sunday morning for 10 to 12 weeks. And Elisa is the one you want to talk to if you have a young person that is ready for that. Did you want to say anything about that? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Okay. So we had vacation Bible school all week, and it was quite exciting. I mean, little ones everywhere, having a good time and learning what it was like to be back in Jesus' time in the marketplace, and uh, just, just what it was like during that time. So I think the kids all had a good time doing that. Uh, the kitchen is closed this month. Or lunch or anything like that. In fact, that's why the fellowship hall is getting a floor redo this next week. So stay out. You know how ladies are when their floors are just redone. So, okay. Um, no music in July. We already did the church work day. So I think that's all the announcements I have. Uh, so we're going to say the Lord be with you. All right. Our call to worship is Psalm 52, but I should hear the ringing of the bell first, I think. So we'll listen for the ringing of the bell. So I'll say it again. The Lord be with you. I'm going to have to talk to somebody about leaving his 845 program up here. <laughs> I looked down and was like, okay, no ringing of the bell, but we'll say it anyways. All right. Uh, our call to worship, if you'll stand, please, is Psalm 52. I'll start reading, and when you see bold, if you'll join in. Okay. Why do you boast, O mighty one, of mischief done against the godly? All day long you are plotting destruction. Your tongue is like a sharp razor, your worker of treachery. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that devour, O oh, deceitful tongue. But God will break you down forever. He will snatch and tear you from your tent, he will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear and will laugh at the evil doer, saying, See, the one who would not take refuge in God, but trusted in abundant riches and sought refuge in wealth. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name, for it is good. Okay, now we have a hymn. Uh, congregation, yeah, I'm known. Oh, Bill. Mighty Fortress. 110, okay.
bow your heads with me in opening prayer, please. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for the gift of this new day. Thank you for the recent rains. Although we may wish for more, help us to remember that you always provide for us with what we need at the right time. Thank you, Lord, that you care for us in every way, and we can rely on the truth of your love. Help us today to hear the words of love and guidance you send to us through the scriptures and the sermon. <clears throat> uh, help them uh, to stay in our hearts so that we may leave here today ready to show that love to others in the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, sorry, I'm standing and I forget. Um, we now have another congregational hymn. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. 707. 707, okay. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be what? Amen. Amen. This is the opportunity for you to come and uh, share your joys or your concerns with the congregation. Before we do that, we have some visitors in the house, and if you care to, we'll give you a mic and you can introduce yourself. Starting with this first row right here. Good morning. Giving our praises to God. To all everybody here this morning. My name is Helen Barnes, and I'm from between Lulin and Gonzales, Texas. 
My pastor is Pastor Gary Plack of the Providence Missionary Baptist Church, and it's a blessing to be here today. Good morning, everyone. My name is Janice Lampkin. I'm from Gonzales, Texas. My pastor is Reverend Gary L. Clack of Providence Missionary Baptist Church. And it's a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord and to be here visiting with my cousin Lisa and Bree and Rem Wallace. Thank y'all for having us. Amen. Good morning. I'm Bernice Lowry, and um, I'm from Gonzales, Texas. Also, my pastor is Pastor Gary Lynn Clack. And I'm so glad to visit with my cousin and Pastor Waddle. Uh, Gary Clark gonna be mad and missing y'all today. <laughs> then we have some over here. So we have the Ledley family here with us. They were part of this church for quite a number of years until they moved to Colorado a couple of years ago. And so they're visiting. And then we also have some grandchildren that belong to our youngest son and daughter-in-law that live up in Liberty Hill. They're here visiting their cousins. And they brought one friend along uh, in addition. Thank you. We realize there's many churches you could have stopped and visited. We just thank God that you came to visit us. I just hope something is said, a song, a prayer, something that will affect your life in a positive way will help your Christian walk as you go forward. Because we are a loving congregation, we're a united congregation, and we love everybody for real. Amen? Amen. Intercessory prayer now. Anyone has anything they want to lift up, any concerns or joys that you want to share with the congregation? This is your opportunity. We're going to have to say happy birthday. Lord, you might, can, we, can we do a, a song like that? Uh, happy birthday? Mitchell Schrader. Whoops. Right. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mitchell. Anyone else have anything you want to lift up or share with the congregation? I want to thank the VBS team, all those who have a hand in design and all the detailed work that went behind that and the hours of hours and hours of putting things together. And at the end of the day, Friday, the children had a great time. It was about the kids and I thank all those volunteers who gave up their time and I won't say names because I leave someone out. So stand up those in the house that took part in that and we want to show you our gratitude. Don't be shy. No one else. John Sharp whole family is out with COVID. So we need to keep him in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. If not others, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. As we look down the list of the sick and shed in, for the visitors that we have and our joys and concerns that we just shared, we know it's all because of you, Father. We know that you're working things out for the better for those who love you. And Father, when, even when we don't understand your plan, we know that we're in your hands and you're going to take good care of your children because we are your children. And we cry out, Abba, Father, when we go through things in the storms of life, and we also call, holler, Abba, Father, when joys are happening in our life. We can't, can't say enough how good you've been to us, Lord, how you continue to be good to us. And we thank you with all our love. And from the bottom of our heart, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. We now have Elisa and Reese Stafford.
Good morning, everyone. We're moving kind of slow, huh? <laughs> We've had a wonderful week, a wonderful week at Vacation Bible School. And looking back at our numbers, we averaged about 55 kids a day, um, not including the volunteer teens or the adult teens. We had about 55 kids during the day. To say that it wasn't awesome is an understatement. It was glorifying just to see the little kids having fun, remembering Bible verses, remembering songs, being enthusiastic about coming into the sanctuary was a blessing. We had pictures taken by our very own Miss Sonia, who we're going to be showing you a short video of what you missed if you did not attend on what our kids are doing. You will see, just like we saw, it is truly a blessing for them to be a part of our Bible school. And as I always do, I pick five random people or parents that kids attended our Bible school just to get an overcast of what they thought, how we did, and what we could improve, and what we needed to leave out. Everyone's same response was that this was one of the best Bible schools their kids had attended this summer. They enjoyed looking forward to it and wanting to come back every day. And that was my goal, was to get the kids here and have them so excited that the next day they wanted to attend again. It is all about the kids when we do our vacation Bible school and hopefully we'll touch some of their hearts if they do not have a home, that they would be so excited about coming here that they would bring their parents along with them. So that was my goal. I enjoyed it very much. And again, I thank everyone who have helped volunteer, whether you were cooking, whether you were painting, putting things up, taking pictures, just carousing the kids, anything in that nature. I want you to know that I appreciate everything that you do. And so we have five days of vacation Bible school, Monday through Friday. I'm just gonna quickly go over the themes. Um, we had, it was Jerusalem market. So it was back in times in Jerusalem, um, specifically during the resurrection period. And so the first day our Bible point was Jesus is King. And, and we talked about how uh, crowds of people in Jerusalem wel welcomed Jesus on the donkey. And they were singing Hosanna. And then on the second day, it was Jesus showed God's love. And this is where we talked about the Passover with the disciples. On the third day, we talked about Jesus loves us. And this is when we talked about how Jesus was uh, prayed in the garden and he was arrested. And this is when one of our little said, um, I'm for his God's side. And he said, I'm so glad that God got Jesus out of jail. And so <laughs> we talked about that. And then on the fourth day, um, we talked about how Jesus died for us. And so the crucifixion. And then finally on the fifth day, the resurrection and how Jesus lives. And so this, hopefully this video um, encompasses everything we went through and you'll see how much fun the kids as well as the adults had with the songs and the crafts and the games and so again we thank you and we hope you enjoy Carpentry, basket weaving, I think that is. Yes. This activity was done by Miss Jan and Mr. Chuck. Focused. Yes. The pursuit. 
decision. <laughs> You can see they took this part very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them were even crying because they weren't done, but we let them take it home. by the end of the week we're all tore up from our stomping and dancing we had our bible drama where we had mr jackson act to our drama raise me and know who you are already went away mr ben in synagogue we learned about hebrew language shalom See, we grew and grew each day. <laughs> Mr. Kenneth back there as our DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to our nursery peeps. We really appreciate you. I said you got it. This is our roller coaster. See, they know what I'm talking about.
Are you scared? It's long, we don't watch all of it, but we just want to give you a little sneak peek. So, 365 days from now, you bring your kids and you can join too, and we'll have a great VBS 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Yes, you need to do that part. <laughs> Another great time in our service is when we give back to the kingdom of God. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. You've been so gracious to us, Lord, with the economy where it is, you always provide, even at four dollars a gallon. You still find ways that we can afford what we have to do for the kingdom of God. So we thank you, Lord. For this opportunity to give. In the name of Jesus, amen. As the men gather together to get ready to pass the plate, scripture says that as if we give, he'll shake together, press together so that you have so much blessings that you can't contain it all. We can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard we try. He gives us life each and every day. He gives us the oxygen that we breathe, the, the jobs that we have, the roof over our heads that we have. Everything that we are, everything we aspire to be is because of Him, because of His grace and His mercy and His love, His love for us all. It's an honor to give back to Jesus. Please don't forget to sign in on the sign-in sheet on your on your pew could you stand up and show them what it looked like okay there you go please sign in so that way i can call you and connect with you email you let you know what's going on rise all things
Old Testament reading today is from Amos chapters 8, 1 through 12. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings on that day, says the Lord. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell it grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephes small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances. Buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account and everyone mourn who lives in it and all of it rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning of an only sun and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but for hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. And our New Testament reading today is Luke 10, 38 through 42. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Again, good morning. Before we get into the word of God, this young man was, I was so impressed by his, uh, at the, at the VBS that I asked him to come share with us. He was our Jackson, would you please come and share with his insight on the risen Christ. So I want you to listen from the hearts of babies. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jackson. The first people to see the empty tomb of Jesus were the women that cared for him and nurtured him throughout his child years. They laid him in a bed of spices and sprinkled spices on top of his body. This was a common burial practice in Jerusalem. But no one had expected Jesus to resurrect the way that he did, not even the disciples. But it was then that the disciples realized this was the plan all along. Jesus was meant to rise, and he was meant to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven. And Jesus' death on the cross is a powerful, significance of God's love for each and every single one of us. Jesus died for our sins. No one else's. 
not for his, not for himself, for us. The Apostle Paul puts it simple. If Christ has not been risen, your faith is useless. For you are still guilty of your sins. Mm. But thank God, for Jesus forgives us for our sins, and he forgives us for our sins. We repent, and he forgives. Anything can be forgiven in his eyes. He loves us all equally. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I can give the benediction now. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Living in Christ, John 10 and 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. What a mission statement. Every day we got two things we got. We got a chance and a choice. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. His whole purpose is to divide. His whole purpose is to separate. His whole purpose is to destroy families, to draw, destroy communities, make us hate each other. But Satan is Satan by himself, but he has to have a, a body to inhabit, to do his evil work. He's a spirit, just like God is a spirit. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for our struggles are not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Evil, Satan has a following. Satan has people in place, and he's, so, he's so, uh, so wise in what he does. He put people who have his, his mindset and his spirit in leadership roles. He put them in place of authority. He put them in places where he can get the most bang for the buck. Because Satan loves what he does. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't waver like we do. His people... Are, are grilled to understand who he is and what he wants for them to do. His whole purpose is, just, is to kill, to destroy us. Well, maybe it'll make sense. I'm going to give you something right quick. John 8, why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to the Father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. So he's telling us there's two fathers. The master of this earth and the one spiritual father that we serve. He's saying that you don't understand me is because you don't hear me because you don't understand me because you don't belong to me. The spirit, the wicked spirit of, of the father, he puts in these people to make them do the, his bidding. Make them do what he wants them to do. Yavaldi, an evil spirit, went in and killed those babies. And Buffalo, evil spirit, went into a man and made him go into a grocery store to kill people. Satan is the, is the master manipulator. He's the puppet master that causes you to do things that you regret. Mother Emmanuel, some years back, having Bible study, invited the man, come on in and have Bible study with us. Pull a gun and kill the people in the congregation pure evil. Satan is a spirit that embodies people's minds and thoughts the same way the spirit of Christ through the Holy Spirit comes in us. Scripture says you belong to the father of the devil and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native tongue, his native language, for he is a liar and the father of of lies. Word of God. Those 
uh, following and the teaching who is divisive and separates people and causes drama in people's lives are not serving God. They serve in their father, the master of manipulator, the master of lies, the master of deceit, Satan himself. He has no purpose but to destroy. No purpose but to tear down the church. He puts them in high places. He puts them in place of authority so that he can pull their strings. Can you, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whatever belongs to God hears what God says. If you belong to God, you can see the evil. You can see where Satan is working. You can see why he, why he's doing what he's doing. And understand that the Holy Spirit in you has the power to defeat that spirit that's in him. The reason you don't hear is that you do not belong to God. He's simply saying in John 10... This is what I stand for. This is what he stands for. Choose. The Bible speaks of him being so direct, Jesus, that he doesn't want you lukewarm. The Bible tells us he, he loves it not to even deal with him. If you're not all the way in, he says, I'll speak you out of my mouth. He doesn't even want nothing to do with you. If I'm going to be with God, I got to be with God all the way, right? You know the game you used to play one foot in, one foot out? What is it? Hokey pokey all the way around, you know? So, so we've been playing hokey pokey for too long. Amen? One day you're with him, the next day you're not. We have to make a decision. The church has to make a decision. I'm talking about believers in Jesus Christ have to make a decision. To be all the way in or all the way out. He doesn't want you lukewarm. The time and the season is now that he needs us to stand up to be the church. He needs us to say that I love the Lord and I love who he is and tell the good news. Because the power that Satan has is limited. But God has all power, all authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. So Satan is trying to defeat us by trickery and lies. He's the master of lies. He makes it sound so good that if you're not rooted in the word of God, you may go that other side. But when you know who Christ is and you understand the word of God, he said, those who know me know my voice. And they'll come running to me. So no matter how many tricks the enemy plays, I know who God is. And I, I know he's up to no good. I know he doesn't love my family. I know he doesn't love my health. I know he wants to destroy me. But I know God is bigger than anything that he can do. Second Timothy tells us, this is what the enemy does. It, it said it's going to come. Feel the evil, flee the evil desires and pursue, pursue righteousness. Faith Love, peace alone does not, does alone with those who call on the Lord of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know that they produce quality. So Satan wants you to argue and bicker amongst each other. Amen? He said, don't do, don't bother with that quality. It don't make any sense. Amen? So it takes two to tango, right? Yeah. It takes a group of people to tango. So if I don't want to tango, I don't have to stay there and take that, that, that stuff, right? He said, move on. He'll fix it. See, believers, we have to know that Christ says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That means that I don't have to face or say things to you. I just walk away and let him to take my battle. Yeah, yeah. Amen? So I, he can do far more harm than my few words can. Yeah. So I just turn him over to, to God. Yeah. Hey, have you ever seen him lose a battle? Cody? No. 
Mr. Abel, have you ever seen him lose a battle? Satan constantly is losing. Those people that he's using, when he gets through using them, he's going to drop them and let them fall where they may. But the God that we serve is so loving, he'll pick them up. All they have to do is cry, I have a father. Hallelujah. This is the God we say. Now watch this. I'm going somewhere with this. I need, I need you to listen. I'm almost there. For the time will come when people will not put up a sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They would turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths and lies. But you, talking about us believers, but you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an advantage. Discharge all the duties of the ministry. Second Timothy, Paul is saying that it's going to come a time where we already here now. Well, people don't want to hear the truth. The truth is a lie and the lie is the truth. This is society that we're in now. When the truth is being told, people are turning their back on the truth. But they want to hear a lie and a lie run, run all over Elgin, Texas. That phone is a dangerous thing, amen? amen. But anytime the truth has been told, anytime the gospel truth of Jesus Christ has been told, it doesn't go anywhere. I remember in 2000, growing up in Columbus, Texas, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, people think they know your business in Columbus. I don't know about Elgin. And, and so all the evilness that I've done, everybody knew about it. Amen. And so when I came to Christ and, 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 and confessed my sins, everybody said, oh, Lord, he's playing with Jesus. He's playing with God. He'll be back. Has that ever happened to you? People just waiting. Oh, he'll, he'll, just give him time. Amen. But when I found Christ, it's like. Paul on the road to Damascus, scales came out my eye, off my eyes, and, and I began to see things differently. I'd I be able to, to, to love differently. He set me free. See, the bondage comes from Satan putting things on you. Christ come to set you free. He said, well, I said free. I said free indeed. And what he's saying is that Satan puts certain things on you that you feel like you're slave to do. If I'm making any sense, if you're slave to, to alcoholism or uh, womanizing or, or, or different things in the world that he has you doing, Christ comes to set you free. Second Corinthians says that old things pass away. You become a new creature in Christ. I had to realize that because people were still talking about what I used to do. Went to my 40-year class reunion. Can't believe it's been 40 years. And all they do is talk about 1980, what I used to do before I found Christ. People will hold you to that, to that brokenness and that things that you did was shameful. But Christ coming to Christ, he said, I'll make you a new creation in me so that you're no longer held down to that. Satan wants to hold you down to that. But Christ comes to set you free. Amen. I'm new in Christ. I don't have to be labeled that anymore. So, so 19 years later, I'm preaching the gospel, and he's still waiting on me to fail. Christ moves you. People, and Satan makes you stagnant. You don't grow. You don't change. you got the same personality. You're doing the same old stuff. You, you're stuck in the, in the pits of, of, of loneliness and despair and hatred and bitterness and you want everybody around you to feel what you feel you're sinking in quicksand but God has started moving us along he started changing your life hallelujah but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added this is the promise that we have as believers seek him Everything that we need, we'll get. 
Amen. I'm get, I'm getting there. And you will know the truth, and the truth will what? I'm free, spiritually, mentally, physically. I'm not bound to anything or any person on this earth. I don't need no man's approval for who I am in Christ. How Satan makes you want to pat on the back. Satan makes you want approval from man. But no, if you're free, you're free indeed. And Christ sets you free. If nobody pats you on the back, i done what I've done for the glory of God. For no pats on the back. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, by the testing you may discern what is, real, what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. When we study the word of God, we see Satan over there. Not today. I see you over there, boy. I see you full of the devil today. So I know what to do. By changing my mind every day, every day is a renewal of the mind. Don't mean that I I don't get angry. Give you an example. Last night about 9.30, I called my wife. I said, I called her from the other room. You know. I said, baby, I sure want some ice cream. Would you go to the store and give me some ice cream? She hung the phone up, came in the room where I was at. Boy, you ain't getting no ice cream tonight. So I said, boy, I'm, I'm older than you. I, I, you know how a little kid mumbled on his breath and she closed the door mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was thinking evil thoughts right then I'm thinking you my wife and I asked for some ice cream you need to go to the store <laughs> I did get an ice cream that night for a long time because my thoughts was I married you to get me some ice cream so you failing on your marriage duties that's the devil right running around in my mind she said yeah that's the devil <laughs> I turned over and went to sleep amen and I'm still waiting on that ice cream sometimes the devil plays tricks with us in our minds to make you think you less than or people are out to get you when really it's not, it's you. Our biggest enemy most of the time is us. If you're in Christ, you're free. Amen? And he makes you wise. It's called discernment through the Holy Spirit to know when evilness is happening. To know where traps are being laid for you or against you. And God is so amazing how he protects us. My joy now in my life, God has been so good to me, is to see my kids and my grandkids prosper. I say this so much, he's done so much for me that if he don't do nothing else, I'm blessed. Because when I can see them and touch him and feel them and, and know his love is in them because of what I started 20 years ago, that's the best legacy I can give them. For those who are struggling with who you are in Christ, I want to let you know that little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So if it's Christ is in you, it's greater, you're greater than anything that the enemy may throw at you. Because the greater thing is in you than he who is in the world. Amen? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The day when time will be no more. No more getting old or frail. No more sadness and tears. No more sickness and death. No more heartbreaks. No more funerals over there. Just joy forevermore. This is our reward. When we stay faithful to Christ. This is what we get in the end. A place in heaven with him. He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servants. Come on. I prepared a room for you. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. In my father's house, there's many mansions. 
And there's one just for you. Isn't that the good news? It pales to compare. All the stuff we do over right here, it pales to compare to the glory of God that we'll see one day in heaven. But I already got glory in my babies and my grandkids and my children. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation of Him. Do the one I did. Oh, three. Three, six, nine. of faith. Thank you, Jackson, for coming up and sharing with us. Receive this benediction. God's will. God's will. Nothing more. Nothing, more. Nothing, else. nothing else. If God gives you lemonade, I mean lemons, you make lemonade. Okay? Go in peace. Thanks,